Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Okay, how to take back control of your mind. Okay, yeah, it's a heck of a lot easier than saying shh. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, we're going to have a, a censored portion because of our current society. And you'll notice I have costume science because you can't say certain trigger words. Okay, that would be really bad for you. Okay. Um, but we are going to talk about the gut-brain connection and literally how to reprogram your, your mind so that you can take charge of your world. Because if, you know, it's kind of like if you don't take charge of where your brain is going, uh, there's plenty of programming out there to, to guide it. Will Rogers, the problem isn't so much what people don't know. The problem is people think that they know that just ain't so. Hence, picture in the middle. Okay. <laughs> now, the censored portion, and please, if you're watching this, realize that um, talk about shaky content, we're it. Okay. So, subscribe, click, share. Uh, if you're familiar with Shadow Band, We've been shadow banned for uh, about a year and a half now and had a bunch of videos deleted. So share this if you're on YouTube and Facebook. And if you are subscribing to the Dr. BVIP, you're going to see it uninterrupted. But thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that support. Uh, Extreme Health Academy. I work with these guys at least every other week. But a group of people that are dynamic, that have experienced life and challenges and have solutions. It's just an amazing group but get on there for support. Now, we're living in one of the most stressful times of the world, okay, because there is a shift. Now, a lot of people have no end. And has, has anyone ever had like a breakdown where you just couldn't see the end? Okay, I'm the only one? Okay, just one other person. Okay, yeah. Liar. <laughs> we all been there, okay? Okay, now, now the tough part, when you feel like there's no option, when you feel that there's no one that you can have a connection to, okay, um, it's suicide, national, uh, national Suicide Prevention Lifeline is huge. 1-800-273-8255, that's 1-800-273-8255 to get in connected with someone right now. If not, call a friend, okay, hang out with people because there is such a social disconnect now and we are communal beings. No matter how much you might like being alone, we need that connection. Now, this was an article out of the Academy of Pediatrics 2011. It said that we are raising a generation that will not live longer than their parents. And it's one of the sickest animal species on the planet. Now, this was 10 years ago. Anybody think the health of the society has improved or declined? Declined rapidly. Okay, so we're looking at 38% of our children had problems, and that was before this insanity. Now, this is the largest health failure of our time, okay, and in the history will we'll bear that out, okay, and it's a financial crisis, the largest one of our time. And you can add in World War I, World War II, where we had an actual objective or an adversary and then that made sense why businesses were closed or destroyed. Um, and, and history will bear this out. Um, churches, places of worship were closed. Costco was open. Parks and beaches and trails were closed. Okay. People were let out of prison because it was hard to isolate them. Am I kidding or was this true? This was true. Okay, um, government is printing money to maintain cash flow. Um, it, how is that working out? Well, now we have the largest, what, uh, inflationary period in 30 years. So, but this is all programming. It's programming. It's programming. Okay, and you're always feeding your mind this. Okay, so it's hugely important that you recognize that to be obsessed with the insanity that's going on will not affect you positively. Okay, it's the, the old story. Remember that the grandfather is sitting down um, with his grandson, and the grandfather says there's two world, wolves inside of every man, okay, and woman, okay, but, but you know, man, metaphorically speaking. 
and they're fighting for a soul, one evil and one good. And the grandson looks up and says, well, which one wins, grandfather? It's the one you feed. It's the one you feed. Okay, so we have a choice. And if anyone says, well, it runs in my family, no, it doesn't. Okay, because your great-great-grandfather didn't have it. Okay, we can choose what we put into our mind. This is one of the reasons Africa has escaped this epidemic, because they don't have a bunch of TVs. Okay, so we can choose what we put in our mind, because that's hugely important. I mean, there's a TV series called Squid Games or Squid something. I saw, I saw one and a half episodes, and I thought, my God. This is greed, this is violence, this is degradation of society, this has no redeeming value, and I, I can't stop watching it. It's horrible. So I stopped watching it. I made a conscious decision to not watch it. So, so what if you, if you live your life with fear and anxiety, you're programming your mind, okay? If you live your life like you're made in the image and likeness of God, and you're, you're an essentiate being, I mean, you're, you're energy incarnate, Okay, um, you're self-healing, self-regulating, and you have rights given to you by God that can't be taken away from by man. And think of the Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who wrote the Gulag Diaries. These guys were thrown in prison for life that they were never going to get out, but they held on to that, that, that truth that there's a beauty inside. Man search for meaning, okay, thrown in a prison camp where, where all your relatives are going to be killed, okay? Why? Because of how you worship God. Okay, and, and these guys found a meaning. So we have the ability, despite circumstances, to, to look beyond this. Now, one of them is we got to look at how the brain works. Okay, there's a gut brain connection. It's called the enteric brain. Now, you've got an automatic nervous system. One part keeps you alive under stress. And if you're watching Squid Games of the News or, or walking down the street or living in LA County where they're masking everyone, Okay, your stress level is going to be high. Okay, if you think that this, these interventions are healthy and good for you and protect you, and you're afraid of your fellow man, your stress level is really high because this is abnormal for human beings. Now, you've got the rest, digest, and repair that is going to be suppressed if you're in a stress state. Now, you've got one nerve called the vagus nerve, not vagus, baby, vagus nerve. <laughs> And it does everything in the digestive tract. It does peristalsis. It does acid secretion. It does absorption. That's only 10% of its function. 90% of this vagus nerve is sensory. So that means that everything you put in your mouth has to, be, has to be directly sent up to the brain so your brain knows what the environment is like. The gut is where neurotransmitters are produced. The gut is everything. So anything that affects the gut can affect the brain. Does that make sense? Now, you can choose, you can choose to turn on and off input into the brain. You have that ability. Now, all of this, we're talking frontal lobe. So when somebody calls up and says, hey, look, you know, my, my son, my daughter, my husband, my, my, my relative, my wife, okay, has anxiety, stress, depression. I say, wow, that's the frontal lobe. Now, the frontal lobe, there's an area in the brain. So yeah, for sure, it's, it's by impacts or in sports, it's affected. But this frontal lobe is anxiety, stress, depression, impulse control. They call it pseudo-depression. Yeah, what the heck is real depression? Okay, it's, it's, yeah, it's just like it, okay? Only twice, half the calories. You know, I mean, that's just dumb. Okay, it's a function of the frontal lobe. Now, the frontal lobe is programmed by this little cere cerebellum down here. Now, we're looking at impulse control. Does that mean that attention deficit disorder is a feature of the frontal lobe? Ab absolutely. And anxiety, stress, depression, impulse control, bipolar disorders, that frontal lobe? Absolutely. Now, the frontal lobe is controlled by the cerebellum, the little brain on the back. And if you look at that little brain on the back, some people would call it the reptilian brain. No, that would be a politician. No, we're talking, this is the little brain in the back that used to be just responsible for motor movement. But we find out it's way cooler than that. It literally controls the frontal lobe. And now that and you'll see that little like tree-like structure in there, it's called the arbor vitae, the tree of life. I mean, literally, when, when you're, you're doing a human dissection, you see this stuff and you can understand how the people that originally named it, I mean, it, it's just, it's magical. 
when you're when you're dissecting a living human being that 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 had these cells that could reproduce. And so realize that everything that inputs into that cerebellum controls the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is anxiety, stress, depression, and impulse control. Okay, and that means every movement, every stimulus, every junction in your body, okay, sends stimulus up to that cerebellum. So if you've got altered movement, you got altered stimulation. Inverse correlation between frontal lobe and cerebellar sizes in children with autism. Isn't that interesting? So we've got, and the, and the studies in Rwanda, I was trying to find during the Rwandan massacre, where they had huge um, cerebellums and small frontal lobes. Because if you're raised, if your mother is raised what, by people, you know, you're having gestation where people want to kill your family with machetes, you're going to be more primal. You're going to want to just like survive. So you're not going to want a lot of impulse control. You're going to want to react like right away. Okay, does that make sense? And now they found out that these kids that had that, that brain development, which was an adaptive development, if they were raised in a safe environment, their size of the cerebellum and frontal lobe turned out to be normal. This evidence of concurrent structural abnormalities in both the frontal lobe and the cerebellum has important implications for understanding the development and persistence of autistic disorder. It's interesting because when we look at this, what influences that cerebellum influences the frontal lobe? And I know I'm talking that, that anxiety, stress, and depression could be a mechanical disorder. Not 100%, but sure as hell, it's a contributing factor. Cerebellar stimulation influences the frontal cortex. So the cerebellum, complex role in executive function, creativity, attention, planning, emotional regu regulation, reward seeking, and in disorders such as schizophrenia. Okay, quiet. Uh, schizophrenia. No, nobody got that. Okay, I'm talking to somebody that's not here. Or maybe you saw him. Then you're really schizophrenic. Okay. Tourette's syndrome. Okay, no, can't do it. It's, I know, I'm not going to say any F, F words. Parkinson's, uh, autism spectrum, obsessive compulsive, bipolar, depression. All of this stuff, okay, is dysfunctions of that cerebellar communicating to the frontal cortex. So think of this. I mean, these are just regular people. Are the, and this is looking at a person standing up straight. You're looking at distortions this way, distortions this way, forward, all over the place. Do they have good cerebellar stimulus or poor cerebellar stimulus? It's got to be poor. And so what does that do? If you're under anxiety and you have an automatic nervous system, are you able to, are you, do you have a good balance or are you in a chronic stress state? It would be foolishness to diagnose somebody with anxiety, stress, depression, and not look at cerebellar stimulation. Okay, let me say that in English. It's stupid to have somebody who's got anxiety, stress, depression, schizophrenia, and not look at the input that that cerebellum gets. Does that make sense? Nothing else does. Or you can give a drug like a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor that has a side effect of suicide and suicidal thoughts and not pay attention to the body's adaptive response. That would be weird. No, that's today. So what chiropractors do is we adjust the spine to change that cerebellar influence. Doesn't that make more sense? Now, it's interesting because the bone misaligned with, in relationship to the one above and below that's affecting the nervous system in, interferes with the central nervous system's ability to self-regulate, self-organize, adapt, repair, and heal. Wow, that's cool. Now, we've got physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Those are the only three. So when we get someone in with bipolar disorder, cancers, with anything, any kind of disease you can come up with, do you think you got to address the physical, chemical, and emotional stress so they can heal? Yes or yes? Absolutely. Do you think that you can have somebody with stage four cancer and they get up in the morning and they go, God, I slept great. <laughs> no. Sleep is where the body regenerates. They got a tissue regeneration problem. Okay, so you got to fix this stuff. Now, this is one of the biggest challenges to have a balanced perspective. And this is that, that Zen thing. Um, like if you look at the book Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, and that's the handout. On the start of it, this Jewish woman um, psychologist, okay, or psychiatrist, is being beaten at Auschwitz by a young German officer. And she has the presence of mind to say, 
boy, for this young, young man to be so violent against his fellow men, he must have had a horrible childhood. Okay, I am not that nice. <laughs> okay, this is, this is like this is really Zen stuff. But what you've got to think about is there's never a one-sided thing. Never a one-sided thing. So when you look at the forced medical procedure or the, let's just take away censor, or put, put on censorship. Okay, if you think censorship is all bad, that everybody should have a voice, what's the good part of your right of free speech being taken away? Your awareness of the value of it, your appreciation of it. So in the future, when we get it back, because we will, because that pendulum is going to swing back the other way to where you get freedoms back, okay, you're going to appreciate it more. And, and think there was a time in our world that somebody said, I disagree with what you're saying, but I will defend to my death your right to say it. By God, that's, that's, that's what we got to uphold. You know, being just human isn't an, an, an excuse. It's an honorable achievement to get there. Does that make sense? Because that makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. So the only way that you can do this is to spin that top. So you look at what is totally evil and bad and horrible and totally good and wonderful and pure. There is nothing like that. There is always that balance, okay? And you spin it, and you'll be able to see both sides. I mean, loss of personal rights, what does that do? That changes your appreciation of the rights that should be, that, that, that have been given to you by your creator. And then you will have that knowing that you can stand up in front of any conflict that people try and take those rights away, okay? Is that true or true? I know, I'm only giving you one choice. It <laughs> really makes it a lot easier. <laughs> like, true or true? Geez, I don't know if I should raise my hand. <laughs> okay. Gastrointestinal issues and autism spectrum disorder. I mean, one of the things that we, we just opened up a lab, we're building stem cells. I want to find a lab in Mexico to do fecal transplants for these kids. It was very, very successful. We do a lot of probiotic and prebiotic in the autistic kids, but you're always going to see a leaky gut in these kids with neurologic damage. Um, and what they found, characterized by communication appearance, social abnormalities, stereotypic behavior, um, and co medical comorbidities. Finally, it prevents um, emerging evidence for the gut-brain connection in autism where GI dysfunction may contribute to the pathogenesis of severe autism spectrum symptoms. Um, again, and this is Harvard Review of Psychiatry, you know, um, 2014. It, it's going to be hard for anyone to remember pre-2020, but there was actually a lot of other issues other than the COVIDian religion. Yes, no, no, it's an it's a evil taskmaster that requires certain things, but you must abide. Okay, uh, GI disturbances affect brain and behavior in animal models. Uh, promising targets for development biomolecular models. Psychobiotics, okay, and manipulation of the gut, back, uh, gut brain signals. Weaver view probiotic and prebiotic effects of emotional, cognitive, systemic, and neural variables relevant to health and disease. Think of that. So when somebody calls you up and they say, man, I'm really depressed. Okay, this isn't seasonal affective disorder. This is devastating, devastating, okay? Because it's seasonal affective disorder. Did everybody have a really normal Thanksgiving? Or was part of your family not there because you weren't masked or weren't vaccinated or they didn't trust you or they didn't want to be around this or something else? This is crazy world, okay? So when somebody calls me up, I say, wow, okay, we've got to get healthy movement. You got to start walking barefoot through the grass or hard sand. So you get that stimulation of that cerebellum. Okay, you got to get some fermented foods. Now, if you've got kids, there's no way they're going to be drinking sauerkraut juice or eating sauerkraut or kimchi. Okay, so look at coconut culture. Look at fermented coconuts. Okay, it's fantastic. They even have ice cream that has probiotics and prebiotics in them. But building that gut flora is hugely important. Look at this one, a Science Direct, okay, Journal of Psychiatric Research, gut, brain gut microbiota. Now, anything that helps that microflora, that gut flora in there, 
Okay, is central nervous system can affect the neuro and immune systems, sympathetic, parasympathetic, intestinal microbiota, all of these things. This is your immune system. And I know it's crazy because there's supposed to be an illness going around the last 19 months, you know, and that we have to flatten the curve. Okay, no one's talking about what strengthens the immune system. Why? Because you wouldn't be available for interventions that have no liability and no long-term studies. If you knew that certain um, substances, that there were other therapies, um, of course, those are now censored, so we can't mention them. I'm just looking at studies that show that if you build your gut flora, your immune system works better. No, don't say duh. <laughs> Although it is, duh. Okay, now, now I don't want you to look at, at the bottom part of this. Just read the top part and imagine it was done today. Okay, imagine what the historians are going to say about the governmental interventions and the health interventions. Historians may look back and write how willing we are to sacrifice our children and jeopardize future generations with a massive experiment that's based in um, false promises and flawed science just to benefit the bottom line of a commercial enterprise. Now, they're talking about glyphosates, not forced medical procedures without informed consent. But, you know, you could do that too because glyphosates were labeled grass, generally recognized as safe, with no long-term studies, given to everyone, saying, yeah, it's safe, sure, dude, fine. Okay, except it's been found in Americans' urine and drinking water. Now, this is a mineral chelator and a natural antibiotic, so it destroys your gut bacteria. Study confirmed glyphosates in breast milk. Anybody know what glyphosates in breast milk does to the infant's digestive tract? knowing that that's part of the brain, knowing that this affects that gut-brain connection could be huge. Why isn't this on the news or why wasn't it on the news 10 years ago, 12 years ago? Why? Because the corporations are running this. This is the programming. And it's, it's funny too, because I'll, I'll tell people, you know, well, no, you got to look at the, uh, the, the channels that were deleted. And I just realized, wait, they were deleted. <laughs> So, you know, you can recommend the high wire or you can recommend, you know, some of the other, other places, but they're, they've been deleted off of the standard social media. Gastrointestinal symptoms, a meta-analysis conclusion, results indicate greater prevalence of GI among children with ASD, autism spectrum. So think of this. Now, these are full-blown autistic. They could be nonverbal. They could have serious social interaction problems. But what about the kids that have behavioral, bowel, breathing, and skin issues? And that's the majority of kids today. There's not a heck of a lot of kids that are super healthy. Should we look at their brain and gut connection? Yes or yes? Autistic, diet. Okay, now they found out they just changed the diet. Okay, they eliminated dairy and gluten. Okay, why? Because those are inflammatory foods. And also we're looking at leaky guts or increased intestinal permeability. Four years later, after the diet intervention, they found positive results. So you can get a result. Ketogenic diet, fantastic. Is this good for anxiety, stress, and depression? Absolutely. And is good movement good for anxiety, stress, and depression? Absolutely. So healthy fats, hugely important. And what are people doing now? I mean, if you don't have your passport in some cities, you can only eat fast food and you could only order that from the car. Is that gonna help the health of the population or decline it? Survey says, decline. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, the, the, the future is gonna be crazy over this. Okay, now movement is hugely important and you can start at any time, okay? Waiting for a crisis, I love Charles Eugster. Now, he started in his 50s to exercise. He qualified himself as a self-satisfied balding lump of lard. Now, this guy won gold medals rowing. Um, you're talking bodybuilding at 87. Okay, at 95, he broke world records in high jumps and long jumps. I mean, when most people, when they're 50 and 60, they're barely getting up. I mean, it, start now. Why? because exercise is good for you. Now, these are a couple of charts that's kind of hard to see, but the charts 
the part that goes up in an arc that shows an area of increased metabolic activity, those are regular people, not gym workers. Okay, these are people like, like you know, normal guys that work. Like I'm lifting, bend and turn and twist and adjusting people all day long. And, you know, one of my patients today says, wow, that's a good workout for you. I said, no, nah, I'm only going to see like 40, 50 people a day. Okay, back in the old days, you know, I'd see a lot more. But regular work. So this means homemakers. We just had a, a mom in here with six kids. Anybody think that she's tired at the end of the day? You bet she's working her butt off during the day. Because what does movement do? You're bending, turning, lifting, twisting. Okay, it's hugely important because exercise increases formation of blood vessels. That's called angiogenesis. Neurogenesis, that means more stimulation to the brain. Synaptogenesis. So when you get somebody calling you up and say, man, I'm, I'm really sad, really depressed. Okay, can you go for a walk barefoot in the grass? Okay, and people will say no, because I'm in, you know, uh, what, Montana or Idaho or, or England where it's cold. Okay, then walk around your house curling your toes. Do symmetrical activity. Get on a vibration plate. But if you're lucky enough to live in a place where you can walk barefoot, although I had one gal from uh, Canada where it's like 10 inches of snow up there and she's in, in Huntington Beach or Beverly Hills. No, this one gal, Russian gal from Beverly Hills. And I said, go walk in barefoot. It's so cold. <laughs> Come on. You grew up in St. Petersburg. Come on, hon. Get out there. Have fun. Just don't walk in squishy grass. Okay, squishy grass is dog poop. Okay, it's gross. <laughs> if you can't walk, my pa paraplegics and quadriplegics, okay, they can't move really well. Nasal diaphragmatic breathe. This is an exercise. It detoxes your system. In through the nose and the tummy comes up, out through the mouth. So this is like a bellows. You do 10 to 15 breaths like that, right before you're going to bed, you're going to sleep better. You do it throughout the day, you're going to breathe better. Just oxygenate in the system. Plus that little tiny three pound brain burns 90% of the body's oxygen. So is oxygenating good? Absolutely. What about the Wim Hof breathing method? Oh, I mean, that's aggressive. I mean, just fantastic. If you got to look at some of his videos, it's amazing. But it oxygenates the blood in an aggressive fashion. Now, neurolinguistic programming. The subconscious doesn't have an emotional component. Okay, it's, it, it, has anyone in here ever learned how to play tennis? Yeah. Do you have to feel the ball? No, the sucker's flying at you. You got to rack it. You got to hit it. And if you hit enough of them, you get better at it. Okay. That's the same thing with programming your subconscious. It learns through repetition. Now we're going to do body posture. Why body posture? Well, this changes the influence to the what? Cerebellum. Okay. Why breathing? That little brain burns a lot of oxygen. Volume and intonation. Okay. So you're changing your body posture, volume, intonation. <clears throat> Wait a second, Mark Twain, people make up their minds how happy they're going to be? That arrogant bastard, he never lived in 2021. No. I have, okay, call Mark, have him watch CNN. <laughs> that son of a bitch would be depressed in about four hours. Okay, no, you can. Yeah, I mean, you can wake up sore, achy, painful, depressed, not have a lot of future, your family has disowned you because you're wearing one of the MAGA hats, whatever. <laughs> okay, but you can program your subconscious. You don't have to believe this. Now, remember when Charlton Heston, I mean Moses, was on that and a burning bush was giving him a lot of good information. Okay, this is also called the Moses Code. Uh, Moses said, burning bush, this is amazing, fantastic information, what do I call you? I am that I am. So this is also called the Moses Code. So body posture, volume, intonation, and breathing, and you say I am before a group of words. Now this is a group of words off the nonviolent communication stuff, okay? But it's really make your own list. I mean, literally every morning I get in that truck and I'm on my way here and it's a brutal 12-minute commute. 
<laughs> I know. I freaking love it. Okay. I love it. Okay. But it's literally, I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm dynamic. I'm connected to the healing source of energy. God's love flows from God through me into my patients. A hundred percent of my patients receive that healing energy. I'm accurate. I'm dynamic. I am brief. Okay. And I say that over and over again. So if I'm driving here and, and of course, you know, this is a chiropractic office that, that doesn't mask or doesn't have anything. So we have no problems with the governmental authorities or people and our staff is always healthy and happy and they have no personal challenges in this 2021. <laughs> oh shit. <sighs> Sorry. Everybody has got challenges. Okay. Everybody does. But if you get into that and you're driving, okay, you're delusion, you're living that delusion and you're going to be emotionally and chemically living those events. Like if you're going to go drive to see Uncle Harold on the, on the, you know, you know, the, the, the Thanksgiving that he couldn't make and you guys got into it last time and you're thinking, he's going to say this, I'm going to say this. Okay. What, what does your body feel like? Emotions are chemicals secreted by how the brain perceives the environment. And you can change those. It's within your power. It's within your power. You change your body posture. You change the input. You're not going to be reading it like, I am healthy, I am happy, I am power. No, you got to change it. 10 minutes, three times a day. And this is even when you get those triggers. Like if, like if, let's say you've had chronic shoulder issues. You go in there, you pick something, and you get a twinge in the shoulder. For me, it's no big deal. I know. I'm going to work out tomorrow. It's going to be fine, you know. No big deal. But if you've had a chronic shoulder issue, you pick that up. Oh my God, my joints are breaking down. Every joint I have is breaking down. I'm too young. I'm not going to be able to hold my grandkids. Hell, I don't even have grandkids. Okay. And then these thoughts suck you into the pit of hell. That's when you recognize that emotional cascade and you pull yourself out. Okay. I mean, this is one from Tony Robbins. God's wealth is circulating in my life, flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, desires, and goals are met instantly by infinite intelligence, for I am one with God and God is everything. What a neat way to start the day. I thought coffee was good. Okay, then you got to start the next day, the night before. Sleep is when your body regenerates. Look at our sleep courses. It's so vital. But this is the whole thing. Human beings have high disease rates if they sleep nine hours or more or five hours or less. This is a three-week-long exercise to reset your circadian rhythm where you quiet the overactive mind by journaling right before bed, just writing down what you did that day, what you're going to do the next day in any emotionally charged event. Not write down everything about Uncle Harold. You know, he also smells bad too. No, no, just, just what you did that day, what you're going to do the next day in an emotionally charged event, okay? And then you read a paper book 15 minutes before bed because electronic devices emit a blue light. And it's also just staring at one thing causes a hypnotic effect in your body. So that rhythmic motion of paper. Put nightshades on because your eyes, you go through 90 minute cycles where your eyes are literally going to open and then they close. So you got to cover that visual influence. And you go to bed at 10 to 10.30, get out of bed at 4 to 4.30 for 21 days. Maintain that pattern and you're going to reset your circadian rhythms. It's a trip. I've been doing this for years. I do not have trouble falling asleep. And then you got to do stuff, right? Uh, something fun. I mean, if you look at most of the religions on the world, not the Covidian religion, because that's dangerous and psychotic and soul sucking, but I'm talking all the other ones that have a, a you know, a, a deity that's, that's greater than you. That's, you know, a, a supreme being. Okay. Like God, there's joy in there. So if you have sufficient rest, appropriate nutrients, play, exercise, move, it's fantastic. I mean, this is one of my buddies, and he is a nut when it comes to paddleboarding. He's done around a Catalina races. Okay, it's like 26 miles over there. Then they race around it. Then they come back on a paddleboard. Sailing around Catalina is hard. <laughs> okay. And juicing, because when you're in a stressed state, you got to get the nutrients in the system. Now, one of the reasons we recommend carrots and apples, carrots turn into beta carotene, and that's good for the lungs because the lungs are a blood filter. If you're in a stressed state, your blood becomes thick. Apples have malic acid, so they help clean out the kidneys, and that's a blood filter as well. Spinach, 
It's fantastic for nutrients. Beets are good. Celery is good for minerals. I mean, uh, you know, just break it down because juicing pre-digests it. Blending every every the, the blending and juicing pre-digest it. And when you're in a stress state, you can't break it down. Um, like we had one of our patients give us a giant bag of, of guavas. Has anyone ever smelled a bag of guavas freshly picked? Smells exactly like underarms. It's disgusting. Okay. But when you break it open and make it into a juice, it is delicious. Delicious. Amazing. Amazing. But berries, oh my God, all this stuff. And, and if, if it's expensive because food prices are going through the roof, get frozen. It lasts for forever. Okay. I mean, just put it in the freezer. It's going to be ideal. Organic plant-based diet. And I tell people, eat just the same way your great-grandmother ate. Okay. And they're going to go, oh yeah. Because great-grandma, what'd she do? She dieted around 95. Okay. But she ate nothing but whole food, organic, and seasonal. That's all that there was. Okay. Exercise every day. Walk, swim, move. If you can't walk, swing your legs. Okay, if you can't swing your legs, breathe. Okay, just move every joint every day. There's so many things that you can do. Take up a new skill, absolutely. Prayer and meditation, prayer daily. Okay, now, um, when I'm working on someone, okay, we have a ritual where we have to go back, look at the x-rays, look at what they came in for, Prepare so you clear your mind because we see a high volume of people. But before you see that next patient, you got to get 100% into that patient. And if, if you're a, a chiropractor, and this is what we teach here, get a little meditation, a little bit of prayer. Okay, God guide my hands, guide my actions. Okay, why? Because I trust God more than I trust me. And I trust this human being to recover and to regenerate because that human being, there's nothing wrong with them. If they have anxiety, stress, depression, impulse control, arthritis, anything else, you realize that those aren't diseases attacking the body. They're an adaptive physiologic response based on the physical, chemical, and emotional stress. And if you can get in there and, and, and alleviate that stress and teach them how to regenerate the tissue, it's, it's called recovery. They get better. Okay? And this is invaluable. Okay? Because it's really hard to find a good, good mate. If you're having challenges with your spouse, okay, or your best friend or whatever, do the 90-day challenge. For 90 days, live like they're the greatest, most wonderful, most supportive, most fantastic person ever. No, don't start yet. <laughs> Get a room. Okay, so, <laughs> and, and whether it's reciprocal or not. So this way, at the end of that, you can leave and you can say, look, man, you know, we had such a good run. It was wonderful. It's just not working out. Okay. Or you'll be closer than ever. I mean, it, it's amazing. Now, so look at what you do for fun. What do you do in your free time? Do you, do you read books? Do you educate? Do you, do you travel? Well, traveling now is a bear. Okay. What do you enjoy? Or are you looking at drugs and alcohol? Okay, now my dad spent three years on Skid Row. Okay, he ended up getting out of that, working at Salvation Army at Harmony Hotel, 3107 Grand Avenue. Okay, that was, that was summers. I had to remember that. <laughs> and, and so you see these guys, and, and they would have to take this little drug, I think it was called Anabuse in the morning, and I was, you know, I was like nine, 10 years old, and I'm filling these little plastic, or the paper cups in there. And they would drink like aftershave or anything else. But, but they're missing their family. They're missing their friends. They're missing everything. They're ostracized because, you know, at that time, being a drug addict or an alcoholic was considered not good. They didn't know that they were just trying to adapt to those stressors. Okay, drugs. People will do drugs. Think of this. People smoke cigarettes, do drugs, um, do alcohol, eat food, okay, to excess because their needs aren't being met. They, they do it because this is, some, this is the only thing they can think of to do good for themselves, even though it's so destructive. So you can't say, look, you damn drug addict, okay? You go, God, brother, sister, okay, you're going through this shit. You know, let's, let's find some help, okay? And because we're all on this planet together, so we got to make sure everybody, everybody is protected, you know? 
And, and it's, it's like nobody, no man left behind, no woman left behind. So everybody, we're all related. Does that make sense? And in this trying time, if you've got five cans of food and your neighbor has five rolls of toilet paper and they don't have any food, guess what? That toilet paper is going to be pretty damn good and you can trade some food with it. Okay. So let's, let's get through this stuff together and try not to be prejudiced against the people that are doing the costume and the Covidian religion. Wait, they wouldn't do a cross. They would do, hey. <laughs> this is why we put up these things, the five things. You need healthy nerve supply. Why? Because that frees up the nervous system and helps you adapt. You need regular exercise. Why? Because that stimulates the brain. It moves the body. It gets oxygen. You need proper nutrition, sufficient rest and prayer and meditation. It can't be that simple, but it is. Does that make sense? So now we're going to get into the dangerous territory that, um, thank goodness, the sensors are there. Yes, we, we really appreciate you sensors because you are much smarter than we are and you are the ones that should decide what should be said and not said. God, I'm going to choke on these fucking words, okay? Yeah, because that's bullshit, okay? I like the guys that say, I disagree with what you say. Ideas should be able to withstand the furnace of debate. I'll defend to my right the death for anyone to say anything they want, okay? Because that's freedom of speech, and we're going to get into that. Now, while Victor is, is cutting off, so I'm going to say goodbye to YouTube and Facebook for now.